Hi, this is Amber. I'm getting down on the floor to start some core breathing and movement practices. When I get down on the floor, I usually prop my upper shoulders and then sometimes even my head with a pillow. And the reason that I do that is because I feel like I can connect more with the strength and stability of my core because I have a little bit of a forward curve in my upper back. And there are lots of ways to work on that, but I don't like to work on that at the same time that I'm working on my core. Maybe I'll explain that in another video. But for right now, if you're getting down onto your back to work on your core, have a prop near you and do this experiment. Lay with nothing under your head. Lay your hands on your ribs. Feel the depth and the smoothness of your breath for several cycles of inhales and exhales. And then take something, a folded blanket or a towel or a pillow, and put it under your upper shoulders, maybe your head, and settle into stillness again and breathe. And just notice, is there any difference in the smoothness, in the depth, the feeling of ease in your body? For me, there is. There's a lot more depth of breath and ease through my shoulders and my neck. So I like the props under my head. I'm going to keep them as I work on core stability. It's nice to start a core practice with some breathing, getting your core muscles, your diaphragm, your low belly muscles, just into that rhythm of deep breathing. I like to use sandbags. You can use a bag of rice, like a heavy bag of rice on your belly or a cat, like anything that weighs about 10 pounds. My cat weighs 23 pounds. I can barely breathe when I put him on my belly. But lay something right over your rib cage and your upper belly. And again, just close your eyes if you want to. Just settle in and take some deep, easy breaths. This is weight lifting for your diaphragm and your other breathing muscles. See what it feels like if you make your breath deeper and more full. So you really have to effort a little bit to make that sandbag move. But then relax completely and just allow the weight of the sandbag to help you get all the way empty.
you're doing this on your own, you could do it as long as you wanted, five minutes or more. But for the sake of this video, that's enough. You can move the sandbag off. Take some breaths where you don't have the weight there and just feel the difference. Sometimes I'm able to get a really deep breath after I remove the weight from my ribs, from my diaphragm. I'm going to work on just keeping the pelvis really stable, not rocking from side to side, but keeping it really stable while we move the legs. The first movement is just going to be to take a knee and let it drop out to the side and then bring your knee back up. Keep your hands on your hip bones so that you can feel what is happening. Can you keep your hip bones level and unwobbly as you alternate opening one knee out to the side and back up to center? And just be observant of uh, is there tension that shows up in your back are there muscles gripping to help you stay steady can you be really relaxed and do this movement opening your knee out bringing it back up without wobbling all of the core stability work that I do has those two goals in mind. Can I keep my pelvis, my trunk stable? That's goal number one. And can I do it without recruiting unnecessary muscles into the activity? Can I do it without unnecessary tension? Can I keep my body and my breath really at ease? Well, I move. So I'm just alternating, taking one knee out to the side without letting my pelvis rock and bringing the knee back up. And then taking the other knee out to the side and bringing it back up. And after I do some of those, I keep the focus on stable pelvis using strength of core as I lift one foot off the floor and just bring my knee up so my knee is right over my hip right now. And then I set my foot back down and lift the other foot up. Now this movement is really simple. The benefits of this exercise come with the subtlety and the scanning that you do to notice tension showing up in other places because everybody can probably do this with a stable pelvis if you drive your elbows into the floor and grip and maybe press your low back firmly into the floor and maybe even recruit your jaw or your tongue like there's all kinds of muscles in your body that could help you stay still as you do this but can you do it where your whole upper body neck chest jaw face are at ease so that the stability is coming from a hugging in and maybe a drawing up of your inner core muscles, muscles through the pelvic floor. And can you just keep that steady lifting rhythm going without getting any of these other tension patterns fired up in your body? And honestly, when I started this post-surgery, I was in the place of barely being able to lift my foot off the floor or maybe even not being able to lift my foot off the floor without feeling that my back was arching or my elbows were digging down or my chest or my neck or my face were getting engaged. And so I worked with the imaginary lift, the as if I'm going to lift for a while before I even lifted. And I just kept trying to lift a foot and then while this is engaging to stabilize, I would work on relaxing the rest of my body, settle that leg down, try or pretend like I'm going to lift the other leg, engage through here as best I could notice what I feel. Is there any participation, any support, any work happening in my core? Can I relax all of this up here? So this is a practice that I've 
continued with steadily every day for the past year. And I think it's the foundational movement that helped me feel like I could stay steady and have the support I need through my core to be able to run on trails, to be able to mountain bike. I've even gotten on the trampoline in my backyard, and that is all fine. Core is there. Core is supporting me. I'll add more core videos, but just give this a try at your house, this staying stable through your pelvis as you try lifting and lowering a leg. I will say one more thing before I sign off here, that sometimes instructions about core stability include um, tucking your pelvis and pressing your low back flat into the floor. And that really does engage the rectus abdominis muscles, your six pack muscles on the front of your body. And for many people that actually is going to feel easier. And that's one way to do this exercise. And I encourage you to try this without doing that, to try doing this where you have just a natural curve in your low back. So I don't have a space under my back right now, but I can slide my hand under there. I have like a neutral, relaxed spine. My ribs are smoothed in with my belly and I'm level. Here's my ribs, here are my hip bones, they're level. I'm not arched with this big space under my back and I'm not tucked and smashed onto the floor engaging all of this um, frontal abdominal muscle. I'm just neutral, relaxed, recruiting the strength from the low belly and pelvic muscles. So email me if you want to dig into this more. We can work on it more. My email is yogawithamber at gmail.com.